Welcome back to Just Chatting, and this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own entertainment. So, for all our Audi fans, he's asleep in the other room. It's a warm, sunny afternoon, and he has found a patch of sunlight to snooze in. So, I don't think we're going to be seeing him, but he's fine. He's happy. And, of course, yellow for Catherine. I imagine you can see, well, here. Every shade of yellow imaginable in this scarf somewhere. So, for Catherine, for Lex's mom, for everybody who's battling cancer, may you all win. Now, last time we were together, which was Thursday, we talked about the great bump dump. When Nutmeg's pregnant belly fell down to her knees and it was photographed. Everybody saw this, but nobody said anything. And we discussed this in the context of Nutmeg and particularly the sock puppets, a crazy war against the mainstream media, against uh, the internet and the social media cranks and trolls and conspiracy theorists, which is what they consider us, as a preemptive strike. In other words, they knew there were problems and they wanted to discredit us before we even had the chance to open our mouths about it. So that was Lady Colin Campbell's theory. And I have to say, she won me over fast because of the timeline, as I mentioned last week. So I wanted to hear what you all had to say about it. What was your take? And that's what we're going to talk about this evening. So we're going to take a look at the intro, and we'll be back in 21 seconds. So let's get right into it. Uh, I pulled these comments from Thursday's video and they are representative. Many of these comments, most of them, frankly, appeared in multiple forms throughout the, the video comment section. And I chose ones that seemed to resonate with most of our viewers. So we'll get right into it. Starting with Surround Me With Dogs, which is a great user ID. Sue, let's be honest here. If Nutmeg had carried those babies, we'd have heard about it over and over to the point you would think she was the only woman to ever carry a child. She talks about her stupid letter to the soap company every chance she gets. There's no way she wouldn't talk about her pregnancies, in my opinion. Followed up by Madam Robinson. No premature labor pains, no pickles and ice cream, no baby kicks, no bladder mishaps, etc. And that was uh, a comment that was reiterated over and over again that there was no pregnancy related news at the time when Nutmeg was a working member of the royal family and in the public spotlight all the time. And although she was bump clutching to make sure everybody knew, oh, look how pregnant I am, there was none of the normal stuff that pregnant women share. And I don't mean just with their family and friends, especially first time expecting moms will virtually grab strangers off the street and say, give me your hand, my baby just kicked, and slap it onto their belly so everybody could enjoy the news. And it's charming. It's, it's funny. It's charming. It's delightful. This is what expectant mothers do. They have stories, cute little anecdotes 
not so cute little anecdotes, you know. And I can't believe that Roscoe went off to the store for four hours and left me alone. They've all got their stories and they are all eager to share. And we are talking about women with considerably less need for public attention than nutmeg. No, not a single story, not a single episode of having to leave somewhere early because of morning sickness or nothing like that. Nothing like that at all. Now, she did leave engagements early, but no, it wasn't because of issues involving the pregnancy. It, this is something that for all of our mothers out in the audience just doesn't ring true. Everyone who's ever been pregnant will tell you that it, it starts to become a major focus of your life. It becomes the point of your conversations and people are excited. They're having a baby. They want to share it with the world. It's natural. It's normal. It's not weird. What's weird is nothing. No stories. No first time I felt the baby kick. No these were my cravings. It wasn't pickles and ice cream. You know, it, it was got clams and cornbread. I don't know anybody who had cravings like that. But it just doesn't ring true. An attention hog like nutmeg would surely have been telling anyone who would listen every detail of her pregnancy. And even in spare, the sock puppet's version of it, again, really doesn't ring true because he starts off by claiming that he and Nutmeg discovered she was pregnant together because she had the pregnancy test, the little pee-pee wand that she had peed upon, and she wouldn't look at it until he was there with her. Yeah, that's right up there with I never Googled him, you know. Of course, you would look at it. Anybody would look at it if they were pregnant, you know, because you would want to know. And no one, at least not in a caring and loving relationship, would want to think they are pregnant and then drag their spouse into what could be a potential disappointment. You know, I think I'm pregnant. I peed on the stick. Let's look at it together. Oh, I guess I'm not. So, yeah, nothing rang true. And this is what, uh, this is what my litmus test has always been for the Harkles stories. Our common sense will tell us that this is believable or it's not. And everybody's common sense seems to be telling them that this particular pregnancy is not believable. So let's take a look at what is next. Uh, Sandra Sylvester, 6810. That self-harm statement is proof, and that's in capitals, that she was never pregnant, that she had, as she had a team of doctors and being geriatric and royal, they'd have been available 24-7 and seeing her a lot. I honestly wish this would be thrown out and have the supporters explain how they explain that she had nobody to turn to. Yeah, that's a good one because the fact is I am not pregnant and every time I see my doctor, she inquires into my mental health. You know, are you feeling okay? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling anxious? And, and she's been my doctor for a long time. So she knows that I, I am never depressed or anxious or I might have a bad mood once in a while. But depression, anxiety, no, no, no. Still, she asks every single time. Why? Because it's her job. 
How much more so if she thought there was a possibility my mental health would be affected by hormonal changes? So yeah, the doctors would have been available. In addition to the doctors, most OBGYN practices have a whole batch of support staff. Uh, they have nurses, they have nurse midwives, they have nutritionists, they have counselors and therapists. It's not like the good old days when, you know, you got pregnant and then had a baby and everything else start to finish was very opaque and nobody wanted to touch it. These days, people are very aware. And yes, as our viewer pointed out, she was not only a geriatric mother, she was older, meaning higher risk. She was also a member of the royal family. So of course she would have had the best possible care. And yeah, that kind of does make you wonder how at any point she could have dealt with mental health issues and not feel she had anyone to talk to because everybody has someone to talk to when they are experiencing mental health issues. We all do. Even if it's just, you know, the cashier at the drugstore, there's always someone you can go to. It doesn't need to be the human resource department for a company you don't work for. That is cracked. And I think, again, common sense. We all see that. So let's take a look at uh, the next one. Lynn Williams, 6662. The problem I have always had with the baby business is that Catherine never held that baby. Look at the polo pictures. Catherine would never have been able to resist cooing over a newborn. On a related topic, Anne Bernadette, none of the senior royals, including King Charles and the late Queen Elizabeth II, have ever met Lily. And that, yeah, I think, uh, oh, and I think these are related mostly because it's talking about the isolation of these children, why it is apparently okay to keep them separate from their royal relatives. And it does beg the question, is this because the royal relatives in question are asking themselves the same questions the rest of us are about the legitimacy of these births. I would say, yeah, I would say there's a very good possibility. Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet might be willing to dismiss everyone with questions about this as cranks and crackpots. And it embarrasses me to say this, but the truth is I used to do the same thing when people would say, she was never pregnant. I thought, oh, yeah, you know, get back on your meds, hon. But I have come around to that point of view. There's simply too much evidence to ignore, and none of it holds together. The, the story Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet have laid out, their narrative is so flawed that the only narrative that makes sense is the one being presented by people who do question the legitimacy of these warming pan babies. So yeah, why is the royal family not even seeing the second child, period? And why is it that they had such limited contact with the first one, even though he was in the UK for the first six months of his life? Why? And it does raise questions. I don't have the answers for these questions. Well, I, I mean, I do. Uh, as I say, my speculation is that they know something is rotten in Denmark and they, they don't have a template for how to deal with it, except that they are not accepting 
the children. Of course, Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet are not offering the children to any of their extended family. Uh, apparently, they have no idea how psychologically beneficial a broad and loving extended family can be for any child, or perhaps they just don't care. But this is something that they are depriving their children of, you know, assuming they are their children, and their family of, you know, again, assuming they even have a desire to be on speaking terms with their family. It's, it's not just the inherent hostility that is underpinning the relationship of these putative children with the other adults who should be in their lives but are not in their lives. It's the actual antagonism Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet have for anything relating to the idea of exposing these children, not just to the wider public, but even to the closer confines of family members. Yeah, it's got to make you question. And I would say yes, these are very, very valid and legitimate concerns. So let's take a look at what we got next. Um, all right, this was also Anna Bernadette. Uh, Megan, who is a self-proclaimed hugger, never hugged anyone while she was pregnant. I've never seen a photo. Related to this, Amy Noel, uh, 9639. I knew once she squatted and needed no help getting back to standing. I was 30 and in great shape, yoga and spinning when I was pregnant, and I didn't gain a lot of weight. I couldn't ever squat, and I needed my husband to tie my shoes. Lady C pointed out she didn't gain even one pound the entire time. She looked heavier after the birth. You lose weight immediately after giving birth, and you don't wear white after the birth. High heels after the birth. Her postpartum bump was underneath her ribs and lopsided. No way. Nail polish two days postpartum. Nail polish is a no-no at the hospital. She had time for her nails to be painted two days postpartum. With getting adjusted to a newborn and nursing on demand and getting zero sleep, no way. Also, royal women are not allowed to fly ever during the nine months. She went to a Zika zone. She flew to New York City when she was heavily pregnant and also to Morocco. What doctor allows that? She, period, was, period, never, period, pregnant, period. Yeah. Well, that was quite a mouthful. But I think that summed up a lot of the questions and complaints about nutmeg, not just before the alleged delivery, but afterward as well. So for those of you who are not aware, the reason she would not have worn white leaving the hospital with the baby is because of potential blood spotting, period. Sorry to be indelicate about it, but that is a very serious reality. So, yeah, no one does that. And I'm certainly no one as conscious of their physical appearance as nutmeg. So, but then again, she does run around looking like an unmade bed. Who knows? Maybe she doesn't care about that either. Nail polish. This is interesting because there is a cute story circulating about this that goes back a ways. Natalie Wood, uh, and many of you will remember her from West Side Story, Gypsy Rose Lee. Uh, she was a, a great actress, uh, very popular in the 50s and 60s. And she told a story 
about how when she was in labor on her way to the hospital, she polished her nails in the car. Because as a Hollywood actress, back in the heyday of Hollywood, she felt she needed to look her best when she went in, even if she was giving birth. And there was a postscript to that story because she later mentioned in yet another interview about it, again, going back to the fact that everybody talks about their pregnancies and has cute stories, that they remove the, uh, the nail polish in the hospital. Uh, I had a friend go in for surgery, and she had had her nails done, big, long acrylics painted with little sparkles on them, and Lord only knows what. And she had to spend 45 minutes with both hands in a vat of acetone nail polish remover to remove those artificial nails. Why? Because they want to look at your nail beds. And, oh, and I don't wear nail polish after the last time I was told I couldn't wear it into the hospital. I just stopped. It became more convenient not to. But they want to look at your nail beds because that can tell them at a glance the level of oxygen saturation of your blood. Bingo! They need to see that. So, would she have been wearing nail polish? Well, I don't really believe she went into the hospital to give birth in the first place. So whether or not she was wearing nail polish is a moot point as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, and that one, as I say, it plugs into both things, not having any cute little stories. Even Natalie Wood had cute little stories. And then all of the evidence that contradicts it. Someone else had remarked, and I didn't include this this comment, and I probably should have. Does anybody really think that Nutmeg would have wasted the opportunity to have that Diana moment standing on the hospital steps with the newborn baby, a la her late mother-in-law? No, of course not. She would have killed for that Diana moment, but she couldn't have had the baby there because, in fact, if she wasn't going to have the baby, that was not the sort of place where she could have gotten the privacy she needed in order to pull off a scam. So, yeah, so many things just don't ring true once again. All right, let's take a look at what's up next. Um... Barbara Justice, 4461, I think the royal attitude about ignoring things and not commenting worked well for the Queen, but it doesn't work now with social media and everyone having a phone and a camera. Uh, Sabine Koch, 3448, I'm also starting to think a new strategy needs to develop. Uh, CMDDK. The royal family should have addressed this early on, because now they have let this go for so long, they will look like they are foolish or petty if they do something. A lot of you had some really good input about the royal family and their take on this, or their lack of take. And yeah, the idea of never complain, never explain. I think was probably very valuable in the Queen's day. Things were different, and we see that here in the U.S. as well. There was a time when the President and First Lady were getting quite a pass from the press. I think today everybody knows that John Kennedy was tomcatting around every chance he got. But the media kept very quiet about that sort of thing. And they kept quiet to preserve his reputation and not to distress Jackie unnecessarily. Different times. Today, that sort of thing, well, I mean, look at Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. That, that day is past. And I think that day is past for the royal family as well. And this commenter is absolutely correct. 
everybody's got a camera on their phone. You can't go anywhere or do anything without someone snapping your picture. The only real privacy you have these days is in the privacy of your own homes. You step out your front door and it seems like you're just fair game for anybody out there. So, yeah, can they really control all of this? Can they keep a lid on this? Can they afford to ignore a potential scandal when social media is running with it? No, no, I don't think so. And the fact is, I couldn't agree more with all of these comments. Yeah, the royal family needs to move into the 21st century. No one, no one was prepared to fault the late queen for still being a, a creature of the century in which she was born. As remember, the woman was 96 when she passed. And I'm not going to say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, because Lord knows she learned plenty of new tricks in her long lifetime. But the way of doing things that worked for her is not going to be the way of doing things that will work for William and Catherine when they're in the palace. And I think at this point, it's up to Charles to be the transitional bridge between the 20th and the 21st century. And it's a missed opportunity if he doesn't take it. So there you go. All right, and we're going to end with this one. Uh, Susan de Saulnier's uh, eight. 24. Who took the picture of Nutmeg crying on the floor? Sick. Wow. I couldn't agree more. Uh, what we see when we see something like that, and we see this very, very often from the Sussexes of Montecito, is what purports to be very private moments that are clearly being staged for the camera. Uh, the fact is, someone took that picture. And was it the sock puppet? If so, he's a bastard and she should have divorced him. Because frankly, what man would watch his wife curled up on the floor, sobbing, and think to himself, oh, this will look great in the family photo album. No. Obviously, someone took that picture because Nutmeg wanted them to take that picture, because she wanted that image to get out there, that supposedly private image to be displayed for the public. And this happens all the time with them. The, the whole Netflix docudrama was nothing but one private moment after another that had been staged for the cameras. Even now, um, I'm remembering that, that little quiet walk they took on that Caribbean island. No one else is there, but someone somehow managed to just snap the perfect picture. Yes, everything, even their private times, are a fodder for their PR machine. I have a whole file folder full of allegedly private pictures that these two had taken. And so, uh, they didn't take them themselves. Someone else did. Of them posing for a photographer that are intended to create this sort of like reality TV glimpse into their personal lives. And no, it's everything is so stage managed. You can't even believe what you see when it comes from them. Was she actually sobbing on the floor? Well, you know, hey, one to your left eye. There's a photographer there. What we know for a fact is that she was on the floor holding her head in her hands and someone took a picture. For all we know, the minute she heard the click of that shutter, she hopped up and said, let's try it over here instead. 
And in fact, if I were to bet, that would be my bet. All right, that's where we're going to leave it. And thank you, as always, for all of your comments. They are so enlightening because it tells me the things that are interesting to you and things that I may have simply left out when I was exploring the issue. So, fantastic job, guys. All right, we're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Uh, I will see you all again next week. And in the meantime, have a terrific day.